So I just thought I'd do a quick update on where I'm at with this section. And if you remember, this was the next section that I had to develop after the flying deck, or the floating deck rather. And this morning, in the ice, it was icy when I started, believe it or not, it was like more like that, all over here. Uh, I decided today was the day, I've got half a day to do this in. I've now done it. And what I've done is I've removed a cow drinker from up the f further up the garden that had hostas in it. Uh, taken those out, they've been reassigned elsewhere. And I've put it here. So you can see there's a cow drinker through the wire there. And then what I've done to kind of keep keep the show going, I guess we could say, is I've put the other cow drinker here. So it gives some sort of continuity. But well, you've got to remember that over time, this section here is going to be completely clothed in roses and other climbers. So this is the cloister pergola that is the back of it. And we've already got one here. Moisei, Rosa Moisei. It's not doing very well at the moment. I'm getting a little bit concerned that that one's not going to go. But we'll see. It came burr rooted. Uh, but as of yet, there's no sign of growth. Although there are one or two little buds look like they're going to pop through. But anyway, that aside, that's going to be all coated and covered in time, remember. So that's why I'm always, always having to rethink this area inside because the planting's going to have to change. But this is part of it, part of the change we're making. And I think it looks pretty good. So you can buy these cow drinkers new or you can go to farm sales and all those kind of places and buy them. People will rip you off if you're not careful. They will not rip you off so much, but overcharge. But I managed to get both of those two for free off of a, a farm where I, where I work. So what I do is I do this to them. I put them, I put soil back into them, which I've done in this case. I'm going to let that soil settle a little bit and then I plant them up as I've done through there. And then as spring comes, obviously we get different types of plants coming up. Now, as of yet, I'm not sure or I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to put in here because you've got to remember all of this is going to be backed by some quite tall perennials and grasses where those sticks are and all the way along the back there, there's going to be some quite tall perennials actually showing uh, and they're already starting to push up and what i'm thinking about at the minute is putting my astrantias in here so the murals gift astrantia that i have a selected jill richardson uh, yeah jill richardson seedling is uh going to be putting there hopefully i've got one or two around in fact i've got three or four around and i may put them on mass in in the actual all the way along the trough itself, or I might cluster them. They do get fairly big, remember, Astrantias. Don't forget, Astrantias do seed around a lot. So if you do have Astrantias, beware of that. There's one or two sterile types out there that you can get hold of. Roma being one of them, which is very pretty, smaller, but it's sterile. But I like to find them around, so I'm not too worried if it uh, seeds around. So... My intentions next is that we're going to change this bit here. We're going to make this back to a path. Well, it was never a path, I don't think, before. Although there may have been a strip that went up there at one point. I'm going to turn it into a path and we're going to make it go up here. You're going to go up to this section here and then you're going to walk around to that section there. Remember, part of the reasoning is because when we look out the window up there, the French doors, we need to make sure that this area also looks good. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm having to dig plants up. These dischampsias have got to come up. The Calamagrostis Walden bush. I've already once more moved this tin. That's about the third move it's had in about as many weeks. But hopefully it'll settle there. The Euphorbia will stay for this year. I said this last year that I would take it out. Who knows what I'll do with it. We'll just give it a bit longer. It's doing, it's doing okay at the moment and it's looking good and suits what I'm doing. But there'll come a point after say another two or three years that that will be past its best anyway and i'll be removing it in favor of seedlings that i shall find or i will have taken cuttings that was just a selected seedling and isn't nothing special to be quite honest i selected a few and that ain't one of the better ones whereas this one the bob brown selected seedling is fantastic better color better all round
really nice. So we'll probably get more and more cuttings. So oh, again, remember, euphobia is a good for pollinators. So we've just had a bee fly onto that one. And that's what they're good for. It's called the honey spurge for a reason. Uh, I removed, as you remember, I removed this, which was the Cotidaria patagonia. And the, I've put that up here on this corner for a reason, really, two reasons. One, because it wasn't going to go long term in the pergola, in the cloister pergola where it was, because over time, remember, as I've said, it's going to be very shaded, this area, and it will cast shade. And it won't really like that. Whereas here, it gets sun all the time. And then the second thing is that when we sat up on the floating deck over there, we're going to get nice views of this and its flowers. And it's a very early flowerer. There's some very, very pretty flowers. And it's very uh, reddish, sort of reddish brown, these seed heads. And they're very, very nice indeed. The leaf itself is a more silvery blue. And I love it. I just love it. So that's Cortidaria Patagonia. And it looks really nice. I'm, I've, I've already split it when I lifted it, so I've got, I'm going to have several of these around as we get going. There's one through there, you can just make it out in the background. There's another one over there, and I'll probably add another one as we develop this area. So it's all starting to work, as you can see. Yeah, that looks really nice. I mean, you're, ne you're never sure whether these things are going to work when you start them. And you've just got to really go for it and just hope it will work. And I start making slight adjustments, slight changes. I'm always thinking of ways to improve it. Never be fearful of making a change just because it looks good now. doesn't mean it can't look even better if you make a slight change. Now, there's something to be said about actually having that as a walkway through. But I'm, I'm, quite, I'm quite liking the idea of having some sort of a, an evergreen shrub in there. So maybe by Burnham David Eye. Maybe something else. I only say Viburnum Dave Dye because it's a good all-round shrub and I've got some. And we're all trying to save money, as am I. So I may end up putting that in there. But this will definitely be a walkway through, so this will look nice when you walk through it here. Yeah, there's a lot of messing around to do. I've talked about putting tiles and old bricks as a path, and I shall do that. Quarry tiles, which I've got, and I've got some old bricks, very old bricks, 200-year-old bricks. They'll go onto the path as well. The path will be down this section here. It'll run down there and it'll run up to it. And as I said before, I widen this path here simply because over time I'm going to be opening this. Well, this garden is open this year and I needed it wider. So, and then as I said, I just, what I literally do is I lift turf and I just plonk it back where I need it. I don't worry too much about leveling it. I'm not bothered about that. And I, I don't really do too much to it. But what I do do afterwards is I will spread soil over the top of it. And that's just what I've done there. We've spread some soil onto it. And now over time that'll dry up, drop in between and it'll flatten it out a little bit. But I say flatten it out. That's a bit of an exaggeration because this is on a hillside. And from where I'm sat at the minute to the steps, the bottom of the steps, it's about a two foot difference in height. So you've got to work with what you've got. That's what I do. So as you can see, this is where the path's going to go in. Now there's a yellow yeah, yellow line. You can just make that yellow line out there. That's where I'm going to cut it back to. I've already cut this side. Doesn't mean it won't be done thinner again. I've got some quarry tiles. Probably going to be four quarry tiles wide, maybe five. Might even go down to four. But we'll see. Um, three, rather. It, we'll see what happens there. And that will all be decided by the width of the quarry tiles and I'll lay them on some sort of a bed of cement or something like that, not sure yet. And it'll run around here and it should look really nice. Creates a journey again, remember, that's what it does. And then over time, as we look at this section here, it's gonna be clothed in a rose, rose of Moisei, and another one that I'm gonna be planting on the back end of it. Because what I am gonna do now is I'm gonna, I've, I've already ordered some more of this mesh and I love this mesh, it's great. It's reinforcing mesh that they use in the building trade. And I've been using this stuff for years and years. It's great for climbers, great for adding interest to a garden and something I've used many, many times before. And the gap here that there isn't any in and these between these two posts here, this one and that one over there, there's none. So we're gonna put some more of this 
mesh all the way across there and i've got another rose that i'm going to grow up there and then over time it's going to take a bit of time the roses the climbers etc will cover it clove it and make it more darker inside and look more interesting so when you sat up on the the floating deck it should look really interesting that should look nice yeah so i'm always out here as you know i'm always trying to think what to do next I'm always trying to change it even as i do it I'll, I'll have fresh thoughts and may make changes as we go along from the change i've already done I don't know. This is how I work. I kind of work off the cuff. I used to draw bits and bobs, and I've drawn designs for people, and I, I've, I used to work off little drawings of my own and sometimes stick rigidly to them, but I've learned over time to just actually just go with it. Just get the rough idea in your head, what you want, and then just go for it and see what happens. It's always more interesting that way, and it is for me. And now this is all starting to gel. This whole section is starting to gel together and become what I knew it could become. Remember, we're very early. We're only in March, early March now, and everything's about to start. Well, it's already growing, to be quite honest. Don't forget, I'm up in Lincolnshire on the Lincolnshire Wild, so we're always a little bit colder up here. But hopefully that's the worst of the weather over now. We might have one or two other cold little spells, but hopefully the worst of it's gone now, and things will start growing. Hence my need to get on with things. The white sticks are just simply to show you the shape of the path. So the path will run round there. It will run around that section there and round, and it should look pretty good. The one thing that's concerning me at the moment is, hmm, is that I, I always wanted it to be like a, a square over the back there. I wanted it to be like a square section. So remember, all this is coming out, all the grass is coming out, and it'll be turned over to a path, and it may run into the cow drinker. The stuff itself, the slabs themselves or the tiles themselves, the bricks will all run up here in front of it and then back down the side. So it will have this hard landscape look about it, but it should look nice. But one thing it's going to be lacking at the minute is a point of interest or something to catch the eye. Although this catches the eye, it needs something at the back. It may even be, once I take it out, that we move that again and we put that there. But what I like about this one is that I love to have this Deschampsia with it. This is Deschampsia Cespitosa Gold Tau. And it really does complement that because the colour of the flowers tend to be, or the seed heads, match up with that rusty look. So they look really nice. But what do we do? Do we leave it there or do we move it there? Well, that's something I'll decide and make my decisions on once. I've dug out this area and we've got on with that. There's a bit of hard graft to go. And obviously at the moment, the grass is higher than the cow drinker in front of it or behind it. So that is a lot deeper down there. And we will be digging all that away and flattening it out. And my intention is to level this a little bit more at the back end there where the grasses are. We're going to lift that a little bit. We're going to add more soil into it and lift it up ready for when the path goes in what sort of path I just don't know well I know what path's going to be but is it going to work this is only something I can decide as I go along I think I'm quite desperate to make sure it stays a skinny path through there as well so we may have a little planting area just around here just to keep the interest and maybe that's all it needs maybe again it needs some sort of an evergreen there hopefully Rosa Mosley I won't let me down and it will start growing and over time, it'll cover all this, and that'll be the interest. It'll be a bank of leaves. And then through winter, it'll just simply be as the rose over there, which is Gertrude Jekyll. In fact, you can't really see it there, can you? So let's go over. It'll end up looking like that. So it'll have that splaying branched look as roses do, as climbing roses do. Rosa Moise is a bit more of a, dare I say, a a rambler than a climber it's in between i guess and it will cover all this it'll cover all this section here there'll be another rose in here as i've said and then that rose will hopefully join up and look nice as well yeah so it's looking good so again again another part of the process yeah i'm liking that i'm really liking it this area in here is going to be really the next area that I need to give some serious thought to because, as I said, it's going to become very, very shaded in here. So over time, we need to address that. 
I want it to be shady in here, that's always the idea. There are lots of shady plants that'll do the trick. And there's lots of shady plants that I've already got in the garden that I could move into here, and I probably will move into here. That's looking good. And that's the black elder, which is Sambuca, Sambucus black tower that I've shown you many times. If you look on some of my other videos and look at that, it's fantastic. And it's just going to be so nice. If you look in the background there, there's some more feeders there. They're cow feeders. Again, different type of cow feeder. Oh, these were cow drinkers. Sorry, these are cow drinkers. And they're really cow feeders. Uh, I've put a couple of viburnum david eyes in there and I've put a pittosporum in there just to protect it. That pittosporum is not staying there. I've got a vinca minor sat in there as well. I am going to have a rethink about what I'm going to put in there. I don't really want to put the viburnums in there, even though they do look good. The reason being that them particular ones are seed raised and they're probably going to get to a height I'm not expecting. Whereas this one here, this one's from a good selection and it's very, very small and it's going to remain small. Those ones I fear are going to get up to four or five foot and I don't really, they won't really have the space to do that in there. So I've got to be very, very mindful and very conscious that that's going to happen. But nevertheless, they will look good if I did put them in there. I could put them in for a certain amount of time and then take them out when I think they got too big. But the beauty of these is, look at that. That's why I like these. These are evergreen and this is what they produce. These lovely blue berries. And they really are stunning. This is Vinca Minor. This one is new to me, this particular variety. I'm not sure what it's called. Oh, Atropurpurium. So it's just a species type really, I guess but it has this lovely, lovely coloured flower that's going to look really nice. I'm suspecting it's an evergreen, which most of them are, but you never know. But I'm hoping to put it in here with other perennials and see where we go with that. I've decided as well while we're on the subject, we're not going to put those all the way across. We're going to make a path, um, sorry, we're going to make a raised step to come out of the patio, the Listen at me. The French doors, we're going to have a, a raised step we're going to step down onto. I'm going to build it up with concrete or cement, and then we're going to make it higher and, and actually make a, a frame of bricks, old bricks around it. And I'll show you that as we go along. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So, this is the floating deck I'm on at the moment. And we're looking down at the cow drinker, the new cow drinker that's in. And from up here, you see, you get, you get this continuity going on. That's what you've got to do. You can't have lots of disjointed things. And, and even if they are disjointed, as long as they work together and they look good, it doesn't matter. Because I've got lots of different things in here. I know sometimes I overdo it with all my little features, but that's what I like. And then the plants, obviously, are the things that take centre stage once they start growing. And it's all looking really, really good at the moment. I'm very, very happy with this area. It's looking good and I can't wait to finish it. I just haven't got the time this weekend. I've got other commitments again. But it gives me time to sit and think about this path. Which I do. I'll mull it over as I did the cow drinker. Because originally I'd thought that maybe I'd put the cow drinker going that way instead. But having put it up here this morning i looked at it and i thought yep that is bang on that that's spot on because of the change in the path so that's a little update for you i'm quite happy the downside to gravel by the way as you can hear it makes a lot of noise which is good in one respect bad in another because it picks it up on my boot my boots covered in it and then it gets onto the deck but obviously over time once spring kicks in, I won't be going into the borders and I won't be bringing up the gravel. It is annoying. So there you go. Hopefully the next video I show will have that wire mesh on. I'm, I'm intending to keep the little skinny section here. I'm intending to keep that clear, not put anything in. That could still change. I could still end up putting some wire in there as well. But at the moment, I'm quite liking the idea of leaving that open. Who knows? And the other idea that I'm, if I do leave it open, the other idea I've got is to put another another piece of wood like that across the top over. And it, it's hard to explain, but when I put it in, you'll see what a difference that will make. 
it looks good in my eye at the moment so yeah so across that top where are we so it'll go right across to the other side and that'll just look visually nice but remember over time that's going to be clothed in stuff so um, we've got to be careful we've got to be mindful of that as well and we don't want to put well, we don't want to put too much in like the wooden structures because it's going to be clothed but it's part of the structure at the part the, the point of the structure at the moment is to still look good while these things develop and it does look good so there we go that's what we're going to do we'll end we'll end with old toad here don't know where he's going to end up probably down near the wildlife pond and he should look good uh, there we go. So thanks for watching again. And I'll talk to you on the next one. Ta-da.